COVID-19 is a very, very serious threat. There's no doubt about it. Indeed, it is very unpredictable. Uh, we are constantly surprised from what we learned, from how much we realized that we didn't know. However, the person years lost with COVID-19 to date are just one thousandth of uh, uh, 1918 influenza. Uh, actually, if you compare with other causes of death, there's many others that do much worse. Smoking, for example, will kill another nine million people this year, like every year. It, smoking will kill about a billion people in a century unless we do something. It's not even number one in the Infectious Disease League. Uh, tuberculosis has killed one billion people in the last two centuries. It still, it's an ongoing pandemic. It still kills 1.5 million people every year. And unfortunately, the lockdown measures for COVID-19, especially prolonged, there are some uh, modeling that suggests that we are risking killing 1.4 million extra people with tuberculosis because of these measures. But epidemic waves with coronavirus, they're not exponential waves. They resemble mostly what we call Gombert's functions as my colleague at Stanford and Nobel laureate, Mark Levitt, has uh, described. These waves die off, they, they plateau and die off. And this is the number of deaths, which is a better reflection of what's really happening because the number of cases is mostly reflecting what we're testing. If you test a lot, you will find a lot of cases that we have strong risk factors beyond age. Deprivation is a very strong risk factor. Um, COVID-19 is a disease of inequality. So here's how it looks like based on what we know now. I have plotted for you the distribution of uh, a population in a country like the US and I have split down the population to age zero to 49, 50 to 64, more than 64. And you have a very thin slice in the center, which is nursing home. You have also some other bold slices, which are the segment of the population who are at high risk. You see that these slices are very thin. Cumulatively, these slices are about 9% of the US population. Actually, in most European countries, they would be even less than that, something like 6% or 7% of the entire population. How does that translate in terms of the COVID-19 deaths by age risk category? About 50% of deaths are happening in nursing homes. And then you have these other slices, which are in dark uh, color, which represent those other people who are at high, at high risk. If, if you add these up, you explain about 91, 92% of all the deaths from what is 9% of the population. And we can identify who are the people at risk. And then that means that we need to do something about them to protect them. We can also measure deaths, but, but even deaths, even deaths, we have so much uncertainty when we're talking about COVID deaths on whether we're talking about deaths by COVID or deaths with COVID. How about other dimensions though? How about quality of life? How about impact on other aspects of health or on health utilization or social indicators like violence, like uh, suicides, like unemployment, like domestic violence? What's the relevant horizon? Are we interested just to cut down the number of cases in the next couple of weeks? Or are we interested to capture the consequences of unemployment, of suicides, of ruined mental health, of disrupted health systems over months and years, which may outnumber the impact of COVID-19 by five or 10 or 50 fold. Here's a, a crude estimation trying to show to you how big is the risk uh, for someone who's less than 65 years old, translating the risk to equivalence of death risk for traveling by a motor vehicle. And I'm using here calculations only for the most hard hit places around the world. So you see that uh, compared to the average commute in the US, which is 31.5 miles per day, the risk even in the worst hit epicenters around the world, even at the peak of that risk is not really much higher. And in most situations, it is even lower. So the risk even in these epicenters is like driving from home to work on a regular day. 
And this is an effort to calculate the infection fatality rate for all of these locations based on these data. And not surprisingly, you see tremendous variability across different locations. Some locations have an overall population infection fatality rate as low as 0.02 in Japan, and others go up to 0.8 in locations in Italy that were very hard hit. If you look at the infection fatality rate in people less than 70, then you see much, much lower values. Uh, and on average, it is about 0.03 to 0.04 as compared to 0.25 for a median in the overall population. But even there, you see situations where the infection fatality rate is close to zero, 0, 0.00. And you see others like New York that it's up to 0.23, even in that population. So what have we learned? We've learned that the infection fatality rate can vary a lot from one fifth of influenza to 10 times or more of influenza. But the good news is that since we know many of these factors now, we can make the infection fatality rate much lower. We need to protect those people and those locations that need to be protected. On the top of my list, hospitals and nursing homes. We need draconian hygiene and infection control measures. We need to test all personnel. We need to test nursing home residents regularly. Protect with draconian measures about five to 10% of the population, probably no more than that. As I said, COVID-19 is a disease of inequality and it creates more inequality. The more it gets prolonged and the more that we prolong our measures, we are creating more disadvantaged people. Eventually, please don't destroy the whole world with aggressive measures, please. Many, many thanks to uh, a very, very large number of uh, my colleagues uh, who have taught me a lot uh, during this pandemic. But uh, I think that in the last three months, I have learned a lot. I have learned that I know very little. I, I think that uh, people who have criticized my work are my benefactors and I thank them even more. And I hope that we will learn even more. And I hope that by learning, we can save lives. Thank you.